Welcome to WooCommerce Live, episode eight of season two. I'm Jonathan Wold, and I lead community initiatives here at WooCommerce. And with me is my co-host, Noelle Steegs. She's a developer and a volunteer here in the community. Noelle, good to have you, always. Thank you, good to be here. We've got a great guest with us today who will join us a bit later. And today's episode is actually the finale of this second season. We're wrapping up our eight-part series and talking today about going beyond your first customer. We'll start off though, as we always do with our community spotlight, look at some wins across the WooCommerce community and share a few of our favorite resources. Then we'll introduce our guest. We'll start today's topic and then we'll have some time for live Q and A afterwards. Noelle, what wins do we have to celebrate in the community today? So first I'd like to share um, Design and Beyond. It was launched by Paul, who in his bio, I just want to quote this because it's too cute. He says it's interior stylist, but he's more of a jack of all trades, creative, crafty, hands-on unicorn. And so he launched his store to sell his craft. So he does these pots with this marble, oh, um, this marble look. Yeah, it looks really cool. And he says his sales are nice and steady already. Um, and I really like how the products are front and center, you know, he really did his best with the, with the photography. I think the marble comes, the marble tone comes out really nicely. So yeah, just That's wanted fantastic. to show this one. Next one is from Nuruddin. Um, it's ready to launch Sataya, which is a shop in India for natural body care. And it's just, it's immediately clear what it all has to offer. And the products are focused on kind of like what the what the person needs. So yeah. problem to solve, you know, uh, with the shampoos and all those products that they have. Um, and the, the product descriptions, you can see like there's a lot of work put into that. Like mm. it's really, it's really descriptive. It tells a lot about the product in a, like in a, in a really good way. It really highlights about the herbs. And so I, that really stood out to me. Um, it's fantastic. And yeah, I thought it was, it's well done. Um, and the last one that I want to share, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a website to show, but this, this story was too good to share. Um, Adam set a veteran up on Woo, and he didn't have any marketing experience or budget, and the store got $1,500 in orders last month. Wow. And Adam wants to get him three sales a day. Um, he's doing it for free um, because he wants this veteran to have something like positive to focus on day to day and something new to learn day to day. So I just thought it's an amazing gesture. And, you know, I just think it's so cool that Wu is part of that story. And yeah, I think it's just beautiful. I, I love seeing that. One of the things I've noticed at just like some of the meetups and, and on the Facebook group in general, there's just folks who are just willing to, to help and jump in and like, um, yeah. The I, generosity is just amazing and it's really heartwarming. Yeah. Thank you, Adam, for doing that and for sharing the story too. A lot of people do amazing things, but we often don't get to hear their stories. So it's, it's great to it's people true. take a few moments to actually share what's been going on. On the meetups front, there's a, a lot happening there. Uh, meetups are, are growing all the time. And I've got one special event coming up that I want to give you a heads up for. We have this Getting Started in E-Commerce series that we're going to do, or, or not a series, a, a single event on December 16th that's going to go through everything that we've gone through over the season, but condensed down to a single hour. Oh, pretty excited about that, working hard on getting that going. And if you're not already in a meetup, I highly recommend that you find one. Meetups are a fantastic way to connect with others. At the moment, they're all uh, virtual, so you can join a meetup like anywhere around the world. You can kind of see what we've got going on right now. It's pretty awesome. And uh, meetups are just a great way to connect with other folks in the WooCommerce community and get support and also you know, share, what, share what you're working on and encourage others as well, share those stories. And what about some resources, Noelle? What do we have this week? Um, so I've got one for the people that want to start blogging but don't know how to start. It's by HubSpot and they really do this step-by-step -step guide and you know covers what is a blog post what makes a good one how to write one they provide templates as well you know they show like what makes a good one what doesn't what doesn't um it's really it's really in depth like i just think you know if somebody wants to start and then just devours this post 
and looks at the examples, I think you have a solid base for like making your first post. That's fantastic. Also, I love the call out to understand your audience. We talk about that a lot. And yes, the first episode. So HubSpot, great materials. Glad, glad to see them. Uh, yeah, they always seem to be putting out great stuff. Awesome. What's next? So the next one is one of the latest guides on the WooCommerce blog. It's how to increase average order size during the holidays. And it's delivering exactly what that what it promises. So it's about creating your own upselling and cross-selling promotions in WooCommerce. Um, for those who don't know what upselling and cross-selling is, upselling is when you, on the product page, offer a product that's maybe more expensive, like an upgrade uh, versus a product that the customers are looking at. And a cross-sell is a displayed in the cart um, complementary to what the customer is buying. So this blog um, completely explains how you can do that in WooCommerce. It's completely built in, which is super cool. And um, they talk about various extensions like the product bundle, or you can um, use gift cards, automate coupon offerings, and so forth. So there's a lot of things that you can do. Um, one thing that I also have seen done a lot is um, when, uh, when there's like free shipping over a certain amount, to have like at the cart, like, you know, shop for this much more to get free shipping. Uh, That's also a good way to increase the order val uh, the order size because people never like, never like to pay for shipping, right? One of the challenges That's with what they is there's so many options for things like this. So posts like this can be really helpful ways of like, hey, here's a lot of it brought together around some best practices. Here's the extensions to use. So That's fantastic. And last yes. but not least, Yes, last but not least, <laughs> um, because the year is coming to an end, you know, we're already starting to think of 2021. So this post has a prediction of all the marketing pros, you know, what is going to change, what to look out for, you know, maybe some things that you that you're like, okay, I want to be one of the first to really dive into this. I want to be ready for this. This brings some great ideas. And um, yeah, SEO and Instagram reels get a nice highlight in this in this post apparently they're going to be really hot ah that's fantastic well thank you noel those are great resources all right so before we get started with our topic i want to welcome our guest so i'm going to go ahead and or we are patrick hi welcome. guys how are you doing very well thank you so patrick thick is joining us today from the uk patrick is the account manager for graph uk they're a large manufacturing company that recently launched a direct-to-consumer brand called Garantia. They manufacture decorative water barrels, or I think you guys call them water butts in the UK. That's it, yeah. Composters, uh, growing aids, garden accessories, et cetera. It's great to have you. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you very much for having us. So, Patrick, our first question. Graph is a, you guys traditionally are focused on more of like the B2B manufacturing space. Absolutely. Uh, you've been in the space for a long time. You've yeah. got multiple products. You serve multiple audiences. When COVID hit, and if I understand, like you've been thinking about this direct to consumer thing for a bit, but when COVID hit, what happened? Like, how did Guarantia come into the picture? Okay, so uh, I've been working with the Guarantia brand for a few years. Um, and we've, ever since I started, we wanted, to, because the Guarantia brand itself is uh, predominantly a retail brand, um, we were continually trying to think of ways in which to effectively move into B2C. Mm -hmm. um, there are, a few reasons why we wanted to do that. Um, but first of all, I'm, I think it's probably a good idea to start with just explaining our different product groups uh, sure. and how the Guarantee brand different um, differs to the Graph UK brand. Yeah, please. Um, so we, we've got four main product groups, uh, three of which are underground civils products, so uh, stuff that we typically sell into the building industry. Uh, so stormwater management, wastewater treatment, and rainwater harvesting. All of these are underground products uh, and sold very much on a B2B basis um, to what we call uh, builders merchants. Uh, so very much the construction industry. Yep. Um, and the Guarantee brand is the uh, is the fourth product group, uh, which is the, the sort of retail side, which is what I was brought in to be responsible for. Um, and that's where we started thinking about going uh, on a B2B route. Um, to come back to your question, what made us, uh, or what about the, the pandemic made us um, yeah really think about going B2C directly. Um, it was 
it was almost by accident. I think um, our first reaction to everyone having to go home and working from home was probably panic, like everyone else's was. <laughs> um, but uh, we then uh, we then realised very quickly um, that the composting, particularly the compost bins, uh, the supply or demand rather for those had gone had increased massively. Uh, so I was actually sitting having lunch uh, one day when my phone started going absolutely crazy with um, uh, orders and customer inquiries from our B2B channels. And we realized that in the UK, uh, some of the councils or the different areas uh, had stopped uh, collecting green waste, so garden waste. Uh, so everyone, uh, the only place that they could go was their garden and they were sort of messing around doing lots of improvements. Uh, but they realized that their, their local councils weren't collecting the waste for them. Uh, as part of a, as a COVID restriction. Yeah. So they then had to figure out what they were going to do with it. Um, and people turned to compost bins. And fortunately, we were well positioned with the, within that market because of all the work we've been doing from a B2B standpoint for the last few years. Um, and that's how we, we really started thinking about B2C. That's fantastic. Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of things I love about this particular story. Uh, before we get into it in a bit further, I want to bring back the, the series. So over the past season what we've been focused on is this idea of going from an I, an idea to your first customer right and yeah. that starts with choosing an audience finding the problem to solve selling it before you make it one of the things i uh, as we wrap this up because we finished the last episode where we've talked about creating happy customers in this episode i want to focus we're going to focus a bit on going beyond that first customer for, uh, for to be kind of arbitrary, I'll think about from one to a hundred or so. So for the folks listening along, what I love about Graph UK and your experience with Guarantia, you guys had a lot of experience prior, but doing this direct to consumer uh, was new, right? Like in some ways there's a bit of like a starting over and you had to go through a similar type of process. You had an audience in mind, they had a particular problem that you just pointed out. And there's a few different things there, but the one of the problems is like, we need composting bins. And yeah. you knew that the demand was there for it. And so you were able to kind of go through the steps. You guys chose to launch it on WooCommerce. You had to work out the shipping and fulfillment. So I love that about that, just the overall experience. So we're gonna focus on two particular topics here. And as, as each of you guys are thinking about how to go, like you get the first customer and, and that, that gap in between from that one to the hundred, there's a lot of things that you could think about. What, we suggest that you think about is two things. First, thinking about marketing, and we're gonna talk about that in just a moment. And then second, thinking about improving your product slash the product experience. So Noel, I wanna have you kick us off here. With marketing, what are some of the things that folks should be thinking about as they, they've got that first customer and they're gonna go from that one to 100? What are some of the things that people should be keeping in mind? Um, so I have a couple of things I would like to highlight. Um, the first is to communicate with existing customers, even if they're just a few, you know, make them really happy. The process doesn't stop um, when you've made the sale. You know, it goes on. You need to nourish that relationship. Maybe then when you bring out a new product, they will come and buy it and build up that relationship for them to become truly happy customers and ambassadors we talked about that in a previous episode because when they then those super happy customers recommend it to their friends and family or whatever the case may be you know that's a recommendation that can really spark something more than say you putting out an ad or something like that you know that's a personal recommendation it's so valuable um, the other point I would like to talk about is um, introducing your product, keeping introducing your product to new customers. So say you're making a, a, a say dog treats, um, there are Facebook groups where, you know, where people, where people gather who would love to know about these dog treats who are asking for recommendations all the time. I mean, that's like a simple example. And then of course there is, you know, running highly targeted ads, um, maybe doing like a little pop-up shop somewhere, you know, if you can at the moment and to get in front of people like that, um, depending on where you are in the world, those are all ways to, you know, keep trying to grow that audience. Awesome. And 
Um, and then the last one is about building your credibility, um, because especially when you're when you're a new business, people don't know you and they might not necessarily trust you yet. So if you, for example, ask for customers to place reviews on your website, you know, people can see that real other people have bought and tried and loved the product and they might be more inclined to you know to do it themselves but also showing things like on social media things behind the scenes maybe the people behind the business um little highlights like that also help you build that trust and like the people behind the company so it's not just a logo it's actually like a, a face another human that they can relate with awesome so patrick i've got a couple of questions for you um, in a previous episode, we talked about selling something before you make it. So in your case, how did you appro approach proving demand before you now invested further? I, I think we were very lucky in that respect, actually, because uh, we'd, done, we'd done quite a lot of B2B trade uh, before we started with the B2C route. Um, so we'd, um, our, particularly our compost bins, were quite well established in the market before we started going B2C. Um, but what we did do in, uh, in addition to that was try and create as much uh, media content as possible to do with how to, make, uh, how to make the best compost, how our compost bins may be able to help you do that. Um, and then um, lots of videos and different demonstrations at trade shows um, on how, how our products went, to, uh, went together, the common FAQs that uh, we might be able to help with, that sort of thing. Uh, so just trying to get the guarantee brand in, in front of people as much as we could. Um, so that when the store went live, it wasn't as alien to people as it maybe what maybe could be if we hadn't done anything with it in the past. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and how long did it take you from to go from idea to first customer? What was that process um, like? It was crazy. Um, it was like I said, it all um, it all sort of happened at once, really, because when the pandemic started and everyone was stuck at home, obviously that demand uh, was created very, very quickly. So we, we did have to act fast. Um, originally, we wanted to, our, our original goal with B2C trade uh, was actually to, and, and very much still is our goal, is to try and improve our B2B trade as well. So we wanted to get as much feedback directly from customers as we could um, so that we could then pass that to our B2B channels and, and help our retailers. Um, for that reason, we'd uh, thought about B2C for a while, and we had a we uh, spoke to a really brilliant company called Technique Web, uh, who are web designers, um, and they'd come up with a proposal uh, towards the end of 2019. And then, as soon as the, the lockdown came in, we rang them up and said, "Right, how quickly can you do it?" <laughs> um, if we were to give you a time frame um, from pressing the button and saying "go." Uh, as in absolutely nothing to built and taking orders, it was probably six weeks. Uh, so wow. we, we turned it around really wow. uh, And a, a slightly unfair because we already had that proposal ready. So a lot of that lab work had been, you know, uh, Lawrence uh, Caro, uh, the, uh, who's the head of digital at Technique Web, had done an enormous amount of work uh, previous to us saying go um, as a proposal. But from our point of view, uh, from deciding it to my, my phone buzzing with orders was about six weeks. Wow. I think that's relatively short. Jonathan, what do you think? Yeah. I'm not I, sure I, about like the average is different for every company, of course, but I think that's a major yeah, that's a major thing to achieve in six weeks. And yeah, we can get much sleep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's fantastic. Obviously there's pre work and other things involved in that, but still there's a lot that sort of goes into it. And uh, I'm, I'm, I know we'll get into a little bit more of what you learned along the way later, because one of the things I think is important that I want to folks to hear in all this is the importance of just kind of getting something started, right? Like it's going to be a continuous process and you can improve, but getting to that first customer, that's what this whole series is about. Like then you're like, all right, we know we've got something in your case. And another reason why we love bringing you on, like you already knew that there was demand, but yet you still had to adapt to the moment, right? Mm -hmm. like, like, all right, we, we want this, there's value in doing this direct to consumer so we can learn more, but there's also this opportunity to, like really fill the moment where like, okay, people need this stuff now. So let's get there as, mm. quick as, we, as we can and get it to them. Mm. That's fantastic. Um, well, so one of the things that I wanted to touch on is this idea of creating demand as a whole, right? So <laughs> we, 
what I tend to find, or as we've talked to merchants who are getting started, it's easy to get overwhelmed with all the different possibilities, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I got to work on this. I got to work on this. And the, the thing that um, we found to be the case is it's most helpful to focus on just this idea of one new customer at a time and letting that momentum build, right? Like it, yeah. you can, you'll have those moments sometimes like you guys have where the orders will kind of be blowing up and it can be tempting when that happens because it, it does happen to sort of get like overwhelmed and sort of see it all as numbers when what we found what is important is you still have to think about each customer's experience and they don't care yeah. that everyone else is buying. I mean, they might care a little bit, but what matters is their own individual experience. And like what Noel was talking about, we find that it's, it's very much this loop. You want to communicate well with these new customers, then uh, with as they're coming in, reaching out to them, letting them know. I loved, Patrick, that you mentioned the like, creating media for these different channels to teach people how to use the stuff. Like maybe someone's like, all right, I need a bin, but like I need to think, I want to think a little bit more about this now since I'm keeping it and kind of what can I do with this compost? What are the opportunities there? There's a lot of opportunity to educate folks. It sounds like you took advantage of that. And then it's just thinking of it like a loop, right? Where you're, you're connecting with new customers, they become existing customers, you're making sure that things are working. And someone says like, hey, I need help with this. I need to understand how to do this. And you can create content and then incorporate what you're learning. And uh, the way that, the way that we, I think if you sort of, if I were to just sum it all up, what it boils down to is listening to your customers, right? Like taking the mm -hmm. feedback in that they share, not letting your, if you have that moment where you just get hit with a bunch of stuff, yeah, you're probably gonna have to take a little bit of time to process that, but don't let mm -hmm. that rush, um, like have you avoid the opportunity to connect with them individually in whatever mm -hmm. way it makes sense, but to really listen, what are they saying? And, yeah. and to, also look past what they're saying and because uh, sometimes people will share feedback or they might say oh i want this i want that and it's yeah it's important to make sure you kind of look past that and say okay what's the problem that we're trying to solve for folks because you want to take the feedback but just because someone says something doesn't mean you change your product or do anything take it yeah. all and stay focused on what the problem that we're going to solve um patrick what are some of the lessons that you've learned sort of over uh, well, I guess holistically and also in this moment, but like, cause you've been in this space for a while, but what are some of the things that you've learned about engaging with customers and how do those lessons apply to this experience with Garantia? Yeah, the, there's so many, so many lessons to learn on that point. The, uh, just like you said, it's so important to give your customers a way of communicating their feedback with you. Um, it, and that's the first thing is, is make sure they can do that. Uh, so we uh, use a, uh, a program called Intercom, which provides a live chat on the website. And that's very helpful for getting feedback for when they're actually on your site. So if they've got any questions uh, that you know immediately springs to their mind, then it gives them a very easy space to, to write a quick question down. Um, lots of companies use um, contact forms. So uh, you know, give us this amount of detail and then write your long form question in here. But if it's something that's quick and they're not quite sure, you might not have engaged with the customer enough for them to want to complete a contact form and then wait three to five working days for it to be replied to. Whereas that intercom platform means that you can, you know, you can be very quick at uh, making sure that they stay on the website. Um, and then of course, uh, Trustpilot is another, is another great way of, um, of getting reviews. And, and once you get reviews, really make sure you read them. I know that sounds really silly um, and something that, something that is, is obvious, but actually taking the time to read the reviews, figure out what people are saying to you um, and then respond to it. You know, there's a there's a brilliant feature on Trustpilot where you can reply to uh, customers' feedback, and lots of our negative reviews have been the most valuable for us because, of course, you're going to get negative reviews. Um, right. I've heard I've heard people say that when they see five star Trustpilot reviews, they just don't trust it because it can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> and um, not saying that I believe that's true, but heard it talked about. Yeah. Um, and so replying to those people, uh, and a key thing to remember is that people can change a review. And it's, you know, if, if someone has a really bad experience, then you can go back to them and say, look, we're really sorry. Um, yeah, absolutely, we got it wrong. Um, you know, the delivery wasn't quite right, or there was a breakdown in communication here, whether that be internally or with the next, you know, with the delivery company. Um, but, you know, we're going to fix it and we're going to make sure it does happen. And if it's something that we can prevent from happening again, we're going to tell you exactly how we're going to um, 
how are we going to fix that? And there's, we've got loads of examples of that. I love, I love the point about the reviews because I've run up to this as well. I've talked to, to store owners and merchants and, uh, you know, the way that I see it, like I, for me as a consumer, I'll pay more attention to the negative review sometimes and not mm -hmm. for, for it itself, but how they respond to it. Mm -hmm. Because that tells, I think a negative review is actually a great opportunity to demonstrate. Because I had someone once who was like, oh, I just want to get rid of it. Like, no, no, no. That's actually gold. Because you can respond. Don't be defend. Like, there's really bad ways to respond. And there's really good ways to respond. And that, but, and that opportunity to engage. I love, like, the, the negative feedback is sometimes the most valuable. Because it can help you recognize problems that you're maybe not as solving as effectively as possible. It, yeah, the, the best the best improvements yeah. sorry, the the best improvements that we've made to our site have all come from negative reviews. Uh, the, all of the best uh, improvements I can think of have come from negative reviews. So, in one of the things we talk a lot about is just thinking about the overall product experience, right? Like, what does it look like? And we covered this in previous episodes for folks to receive the product. What does it look like for them to like open it for the first time to go through this? experience of getting used to like how they use it, getting support around it, et cetera. And it sounds like, um, it sounds like you guys learned a lot sort of in that process and there was some iteration involved. What are some of the lessons and takeaways that stand out from your experience and in, in building Guarantia and especially going from that launch to like what you've learned since? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, the only reason I'm laughing is because there's, there's so much we didn't do right the first time. Um, and it's, it's just funny to, uh, to look back on it and, and think about how much has changed. But um, we have our decorative uh, water barrel or water butt um, side of our business is uh, something that requires uh, two or three different accessories. Mm. Um, so that's one thing that we, we learned early on is that we had to make sure that the customer fully understood exactly what was required. Uh, sorry, could you just jump on Guarantee UK rather than- Oh, yes, yes, yes. Of course, let me bring that back up. Well, I want to show the site how because how good it looks. I'll bring that up and while you're talking, carry on. An international one that we use. Um, yep. so that's not a web store um, or the web store that we built. The uh, so I was saying about the the different accessories. So yeah, the the water butts uh, require lots of different um, require lots of different accessories. I say lots of different two main accessories. There you go. That's perfect. So a tap and a downpipe filter. Um, and what we found is that people were. Uh, people were deciding on a water butt that they liked. So if you just uh, on that uh, cluster of six, if you yes, uh, if you click on the water butts one, yeah, that's perfect. So people would get to this point and then they'd see, oh, I really like the uh, say the antique amphora, that one that you're just hovering over. Um, that's that's one of our more popular products. Uh, that's why it's uh, coming on quickly. Looks uh, lovely. But just on the right hand side of the product there, uh, beloved that. <laughs> I love how I'm pointing at it and I'm not actually pointing at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so just below the product description, uh, we've got all the different things that you might need. Um, so in order to connect a water butt to uh, the gutter or the downpipe filter, or the downpipe rather, uh, you need a downpipe filter. And that is what's connecting the water butts to uh, the guttering or the downpipe. Um, some people call them a diverter um, in the UK. I'm not quite sure what the terminology, terminology is elsewhere. Um, but that's something that we we had to make very obvious from the start because people, you know, we had instances of people just ordering the water butt and then it arrived and they're saying, well, how do I, you know, how do I connect this up? Because one's useless without the other. Um, and it's uh, the, the biggest lesson that we learned from that is um, just don't assume that the customers know as much about your product as you do, yeah. um, which again is is just blindingly obvious. But um, but people don't. It's the first time they're seeing it. Um, they don't know the ins and outs of the product anywhere near as well as you do. So, um, so make it clear and then also uh, make it on one page rather than having to go through loads of different steps and having a long process of checkout. Um, if you're anything like me, you just want to get on there, get it ordered and, and do something else. So um, make sure everything is on there at once. Uh, that's that's brilliant. And and that's such a great example, too, because when you're making something, it's very easy if you don't think about your customers and their perspective to make assumptions like, oh, this is basic. This is obvious. Right. Yeah. And yeah. people don't don't know. And you may have people who have no prior experience, but they're suddenly like, OK, I need to yeah. figure this stuff out. That's fantastic. Yeah. Well, one other point that's worth yeah. mentioning is um, just on a sort of general um, advice point is make sure your pictures are as good as they can be and make uh, sure there's plenty of them. Um, this is something that we found um, saved us an enormous amount of time internally. Uh, is that if you don't have, if your uh, if your product isn't particularly well explained through the images, 
then the amount of customers, uh, customer traffic that you get in terms of questions goes through the roof. Ah. Um, mm. And of course, you don't want to completely eliminate it. You always want to be talking to your customers, but you don't want to be continuously saying the same thing that could be easily communicated without taking the time. I love that point. That's such a good example of that loop, right? Because maybe you start, you, you take your, you do your best to get something up, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And then, and, and your guys, your images are fantastic. If someone's starting out, you get something up there, listen to what customers are saying. And if they're asking you questions, so they're not asking you to give them better pictures, usually. They're asking questions, but then you can say, okay, I'll answer these questions, but how could I serve them more effectively? Oh, if I were to take better pictures and, or maybe give more pictures, that can be a way of getting closer to the problem that's actually coming up, which is that they, they don't fully understand some aspect of the product or they, they're, maybe they can't fully picture it, no pun intended, on like how it's gonna, how yeah. it's gonna work. Um, oh, that's fantastic. So last question in this, in this vein and this has all been this has been great. What general guidance would you have for folks who are starting out? Like think of the folks who they got their first customer. Now they have that sort of journey from one to a hundred and beyond. What what sort of high level guidance would you give? Um, so the biggest the biggest realization for us was getting the getting the shop window up and started is uh, is a great milestone, and you're you're always very very pleased. I know that my family were. Um, bored of hearing me talk about it once we've gone through the design stage and getting it all set up um but really the the work and the problems start when you first start getting orders um and a good web shop is useless unless you've got first class customer service um and that's not saying that we have first class customer service um because we don't yet uh we're we're getting we're getting better and uh, listening to customers all the time but um the it's the operation side of things that can be the make or break um, because it's like I said, when you've got amazing companies like Technique Web, like we have, who are helping you with the setup, obviously fantastic platforms like WooCommerce uh, that make the um, the e-commerce side of things uh, that much easier. You then get uh, people buying your stuff and they want it delivered and they want it delivered on a certain day and they want to know why it's not there and mm. who's delivering it and when it's going to arrive and where it is in between leaving you and getting to them. Um, and that's the really that can be the really tricky bit. Um, so it's yeah, being able to talk to customers every step of the way, being able to give them as much information as they can, as you can, as easily as you can, um, so that it doesn't take up too much of your time, because there's going to be lots, uh, there's going to be lots of lots of uh, inquiries flying at you from every direction. Oh. So um, you know, if you have any weaknesses within your order processing operations and fulfillment. Um, going starting a web shop is really going to exacerbate those. Uh, so do your best to get those fine tuned before you start. That's fantastic. Noel, anything to add uh, from, from your experience or what you've seen with others as far as this general guidance, things to be keeping in mind? I just thought it was really awesome to hear, um, to hear the story behind Garantia, you know, after highlighting it before on a Wood Life episode. Um, so yeah, Thank you so much for the insights, Patrick. Um, I thought it was really, it was a value packed episode. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank Patrick, you. Yeah. And, and I know obviously it takes an entire team. You're, we appreciate having you here. So there's a lot of folks that are involved. You guys did a great job. It's a great example in my mind of how you can use a, a, an open source platform like Woo, get a good team together. And it's an evolving process, right? So it's good to have a platform that can evolve with you and you can make updates and adjustments as you need to go. Yeah, just just if I could just make a quick shout out quickly. Um, we, we can't thank Technique Web enough. Uh, they're a company that have helped us a lot with it. And in particular, uh, Lawrence at Technique Web, who's the head of digital, uh, who've been, you know, we wouldn't be able to sit without them. So massive thank you to them. That's fantastic. And that's one of the things we love about this WooCommerce ecosystem too. There's so many folks who, put time and energy to helping them. Obviously it's the work itself, but also the best work comes from people who really sort of care about it and want their clients to succeed. So it sounds like you- Absolutely. Can. Yeah, and Lawrence is a fantastic example of that. That's fantastic. So let's wrap this up. Uh, my final sort of guidance for folks listening is keep learning, be curious as you kind of go into this next journey. Uh, you're it, 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 inevitable, you're gonna get negative feedback at some point. You're gonna have people who are frustrated. Look at those as opportunities to make things better and just, just sort of embrace it. One of the, the biggest pieces of guidance I'll offer you is to join a community. And we have a fantastic community here in the WooCommerce ecosystem. Uh, community is a lot, where a lot of the magic happens. Uh, you can, 
get to know folks. You can hear insights and perspectives. If you haven't already, check out our Facebook group. We've got a lot of folks there from all over the world. This is where we first learned about Guarantia and what they were working on. Lawrence, I think, was the one who actually shared this originally, and he's a member of that group. Um, one of the other things I want to bring up, too, is if you haven't considered, if you're wanting to get into this community, consider volunteering. Uh, op we, this is an open source ecosystem. Like we at WooCommerce, you can use this stuff without us ever making any money off of it. We have services that we offer, but WooCommerce is something that's open source and it's com community led. And one of the ways, and it's something that anyone can be a part of. So we're gonna have a link in the description if you're interested in volunteering and helping out in some of these community spaces, we highly encourage you to do that. It's one of the, some of the most fun that I've had. And um, <laughs> the other thing that you can do is find a local meetup. Uh, we have meetups uh, all over the world where right now you can meet with folks virtually. And as you're going on this journey from your first to your first hundred and beyond, just, I encourage you to really embrace being a part of community. It can be a great way to learn from others and kind of what they're doing and what's working and what's not working. Uh, keep educating yourself as well. If you haven't already, check out the WooCommerce blog. You can subscribe and we always have new content coming there. And that's it. So thank you so much, Patrick, for joining us for this episode to wrap out the season, for sharing your story. And uh, I, I encourage you guys to keep up the great work with the site. It looks fantastic. Um, a special thank you thanks. very much. Um, thank you very much for having us. Absolutely. Special thanks to, to Anna, our producer behind the scenes here, and to all of you who've been with us since the beginning of the season and watching. Thank you. That's a wrap. Hey, thanks for watching. After the live show, we set aside time for question and answers, and I'd love to have you join us next time. Go to WooCommerce.com forward slash live and sign up. It's free. You'll get notified when we go live and you'll be part of the live audience where you could ask questions and hang out with us after. I look forward to seeing you there.